Okay. Good evening. Welcome to the April 6th Clifton Park Town Board meeting. We'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Second by Ms. Wallowit. Discussion. Okay, Teresa. Councilman Whalen? Yes to the 6th, the 16th, the 13th. Or the uh, 9th and 16th. Uh, Councilman Sandor? Yes. Councilman Romano? Abstain. Councilman Wallowit? Yes. Supervisor Barrett? Yes. Communications and announcements. Uh, we are, as you can see, if you're watching this live or we'll watch the uh, tape later, we are having our uh, town board meeting here in person at town hall. We're uh, uh, making sure that we're following all the distancing guidelines. We will keep the meeting as uh, short as possible. And um, just a couple of notes here um, for the for the foreseeable future. Um, I believe we should uh, discuss having the meetings at 5 o'clock for operational purposes. Um, and uh, if there's any change to that, or if anybody has any different ideas about that, we can certainly have that discussion. But I think uh, at this point, uh, the 5 o'clock uh, hour would be uh, preferable. Uh, one, uh, one important item, we had originally scheduled a public hearing for reestablishing the sewer district uh, in, in the shared project between the town of Clifton Park and the town of Ballston. In discussions with the town of Ballston, they, uh, uh, it was decided that uh, they would not move forward with their public hearing. Uh, we are 13% of that district. So therefore, a minor player, and we uh, we therefore canceled the public hearing that we were to to hold as well. Uh, as far as the status of the district at this point, I guess the best way to describe it would be that it is on hold, as we described at our last meeting, and I know Boston has done the same for Boston residents, is to describe the situation as we do. Uh, need to reestablish the district uh, due to the change in the in the uh, funding number uh, to uh, to complete the project and also uh, involved in that equation is a new five million dollar grant which from New York State which was on top of grant money that uh, was uh, earlier uh, allocated for that project so, with all that, there is the need to have to reestablish the district, which requires a public hearing. Uh, and then, uh, after the public hearings of the two towns are held, it, there is a 30-day permissive referendum period, which is uh, part of any process uh, that establishes a special district. The other concern not only was, you know, how to effectively hold a public hearing, and there, there are guidelines that have been um, that, that have been sent to us by New York State that uh, give guidance as far as how to hold public hearings. So it can be done, but uh, the other concern was for uh, people to to have the opportunity to challenge a district through the permissive referendum period. It does require getting petition signatures. Uh, that would be another problem, um, having people knocking on doors, asking people to sign a petition is not a good practice right now. Uh, the, the other part of that would, would possibly be a vote uh, that could occur uh, if, if a permissive referendum 
was uh, was successful, which only requires five percent. So it's a, it's a very low percentage, fairly easy to do in a project of this size. So <clears throat> having a vote again, uh, we see uh, votes being canceled uh, here and, and across the country. Not a good practice to hold a vote on anything at this particular time. So with all those challenges uh, coming to pass, it was decided that uh, neither town would hold the public hearing, which puts the whole project on hold for now. Uh, as that might change, uh, we'll certainly get the word out, uh, set a public hearing to uh, reestablish the district. Uh, as uh, as conditions are permissible, um, so I just want to make sure we everybody was aware of that. Uh, we unfortunately were informed uh, just um, just late this afternoon uh, that uh, there were three new uh, people that were deceased, um, and. Fortunately, we had uh, two, two men in their 80s from Clifton Park who uh, fell ill and passed away. And our, our condolences and, and thoughts and prayers go uh, are with uh, those victims and their families. Um, just uh, terrible to, to receive that news and uh, to know that... Um, People in, in our town, county, state, and, and country are uh, are dealing with this uh, this virus that has been uh, moving steadily through all communities. So we uh, we're very saddened to learn about that. Um, there's been some news overall about New York that has been today that has been considered positive. As far as trends of uh, people being hospitalized and the uh, and, and, and other metrics that are being studied from a macro view, but none of that really is very very heartening. At least when when you consider that uh, you have these types of uh, uh, dreadful situations occurring so close to home here in Clifton Park and Saratoga County, so. Uh, so, of course, we do hope that overall the trends remain good, that there's real light at the end of the tunnel, that, that we're um, moving in the right direction as far as the, uh, the effects of the virus are concerned. No way to know at this point for sure, but uh, we know we're all praying for that. And um, I, uh, I just hope beyond hope that uh, we don't lose anybody else. Um, here in town, the county, state, or across the country. So, uh, we did uh, receive that terrible news this afternoon. Um, you know, there's so many uh, people to thank uh, as, as we've experienced a shutdown in New York State and obviously many parts of the country. People have banded together here in Clifton Park. And I can't thank these people enough. And at, when this is over, and it will end, um, I believe Clifton Park and really any community has the opportunity to come out of this whole situation better than where we were when we entered. Um, but until that time, and until we can put this virus uh, in, in the situation we're experiencing now in the rearview mirror, um, you know, we will recognize all of the volunteers that have just stepped up beyond belief seven days a week to help uh, neighbors in their community. I mean, it's just been, just been fantastic. Uh, one such uh, event uh, was something that we hastily put together a couple of weeks ago on a Thursday afternoon. We got the idea and put the word out, and on Saturday we collected 6,000 pounds of food for Captain. Um, and uh, they're almost 
done with that 6,000. They continue to come, pick it up uh, piece by piece and replenish their uh, the captain food pantry. Uh, but, um, but it was just a great outpouring of support and generosity from uh, the people of Clif Clifton Park and we can't thank you enough. We, um, we've decided since we are low on inventory for the pantry that we would do another food collection which we uh, just sent out a press release this morning about that uh, and that'll take place this Friday the 10th from 9 to 3 at the Clifton Park Senior Community Center. Uh, we'll have a couple of uh, town pickups, pickup trucks parked there. Uh, you can just drive up, put your donation in, in the back of one of the trucks. Our volunteers that will be there just to answer any questions will give you a thank you wave and, and you're on your way. So, so we would appreciate uh, any, any uh, additional donations that uh, people can contribute uh, this Friday from 9 to 3. You know, we have a lot of neighbors who are hurting. It's, um, uh, you know, in our hospitality industry and so many other industries, that uh, are vibrant in Clifton Park and Saratoga County throughout the year. You know, those people lost their jobs right away. As soon as they were shut down, the first thing that was shut down was public places like restaurants. Uh, and uh, any gathering place. And those people lost their jobs right away. And they and many others. And it's... Uh, it's a challenging situation for a lot of folks, so the, the need that the Captain Pantry and other similar entities are experiencing is growing, and we're trying to do whatever we can to uh, fill that gap uh, before, um, before hopefully things are normalized in the, uh, in the near future. Um, so, uh, so that will be this Friday. The other, the other thing we're trying to do is, you know, a lot of seniors are smartly staying at home, and that's a good thing, and we want to promote that. Uh, so I want to thank uh, uh, folks here for the great work that's being done to help senior citizens in our community with uh, groceries and other running other errands. And uh, it's all being coordinated here, but uh, we couldn't do it without the volunteers. It's just been fantastic. Um, and uh, I want to thank uh, Councilwoman Standard and, uh, and uh, Raina Manafo uh, in particular for uh, helping to coordinate uh, those efforts. And we're all pitching in seven days a week. Uh, like I said, we have a whole list of volunteers, and I don't want to leave anybody out, so we're going to recognize, I've asked Matt to come up with a certificate so we can recognize not only in individual volunteers, but also the businesses and organizations that have stepped forward to uh, support fellow uh, Clifton Park residents. Um, so we're going to continue with that uh, process of uh, helping people stay home because they should stay home. Uh, there's many seniors that should not be out and about in the community and if we can help them stay home by running some errands, doing some grocery shopping, then that's something that uh, we should do and we will do. Uh, I want to also mention our senior van service continues to operate. Uh, there are still many medical appointments that people need to attend. Dialysis is a big one. So we're still doing a lot of uh, uh, pe uh, driving people, uh, a lot of transports to uh, dialysis and other similar medical needs. So I want to thank our senior van drivers and dispatchers for uh, continuing to work hard. I want to thank all the all the people that are working hard in the town. All of our departments are open and operating. We have a, our our workforce levels have been minimized. Incredibly, um, so uh, we're, we're to the point with the workforce levels we have. All of the uh, departments are operating, but at a level that we're just trying to maintain what we have 
and, uh, and to keep things together and operating. Uh, so that's, that's where we are. So we're, we're operating, we're, we're, we're running as an organization, we're up and running, but, um, but uh, not, certainly not anywhere near the extent we were prior to the workforce level reductions that were ordered uh, by the governor. <clears throat> Um, another, uh, one of the businesses, uh, 3N Document Destruction was incredible help when we did the first food drive for Captain. Another business uh, that's really stepped up is um, uh, Ravenswood Restaurant. I'll, I'll ask Councilwoman Standar to talk about that real quick and also, um, you know, our Are You OK program, which is something we've had for about 20 years where we call uh, seniors who have registered and uh, Councilwoman Wallowitz has been working hard on that with others. So uh, maybe you want to talk a little bit about uh, Ravenswood? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Um, the volunteer effort that has stepped up to help the community in the past three weeks has been incredible. And I want to personally thank right now all of our volunteers. And like Mr. Supervisor said, we, would, we will be acknowledging um, each volunteer for their efforts. They really have stepped up and done some pretty incredible things in these past three weeks. Some pretty difficult things too for our most vulnerable, pop uh, vulnerable population. Um, and Ravenswood has stepped up. Um, they have been donating meals three days a week to folks who cannot and should not get out um, and enjoy a restaurant meal. So it really has been an incredible effort from Ravenswood. We have uh, a lot of volunteers who have been volunteering to deliver those meals in a safe manner to folks who, you know, really could use a little bit of comfort in their homes at this time. And um, so I really want to thank the volunteers, the drivers, and Ravenswood for, for doing that. It means so much to the recipients, recipients of these meals. These people are, it's bringing them comfort um, to know that they live in such an incredible community. Um, and through this process, um, if, if there's anyone out there, we have, we have um, been actively searching for residents who may benefit from this program. Uh, Councilwoman Wallowit has been calling people um, to see what their needs are and so thank you for for helping with that um, so it's the are you okay program in addition to our grocery and our meal delivery program um, if, if we have not called you and if you are interested if you need that help please call here at town hall at 518-371-0083 and we can assess your need and help you with what you need get you a nice warm meal, bring some basic necessities to your home, again, all in a safe manner. Um, so you can also, um, we do need some more volunteers. Ravenswood has stepped up, our need is increasing, and Ravenswood is stepping up with meeting that need, and they've committed to more meals. With that, we do need more drivers uh, delivering meals. And if you are interested, um, please email me at astandart at cliftonpark.org. You can also call 3710083 or email Supervisor Barrett at pbarrett at cliftonpark.org. Uh, we have a, a protocol set up to keep you safe as well. And um, we don't ask any of our drivers to do anything extensive. The, the time commitment is minimal. Um, but you are bringing a lot of hope to a lot of people in, in our community. And um, again, if you're interested in volunteering for that, that would be much appreciated. Um, we, you know, the, the food donations, that was an incredible effort. 6,000 pounds of food delivered to Captain. And um, there's a lot, of, a lot of folks that Captain is feeding right now. I know that their, their clientele has been increasing as well. So if you can attempt, drop off some food to our food drive on Friday, it would be very much appreciated. Um, so, you know, I just wanted to mention our, our cleanup operation that we have going on. Mm -hmm. um, throughout the past three weeks, when the sunshine was out, uh, we were receiving pictures of people enjoying our trails 
and our parks and our preserves and all the open spaces that we have to offer. And we were trying to consider what to do for our annual cleanup day, which, you know, every year we usually get 400, 450 volunteers out there cleaning up our parks and preserves. Um, but people were doing it on their own. People were out there uh, with their kids and they were cleaning up. And so instead of doing an organized day like we do every year, we have decided to, um, we still are providing bags for folks if they want to get out there with their families. And bags can be picked up here at Town Hall in the vestibule. You don't need to come in. Uh, you can just help yourself to, to one bag. Um, actually, email us at Town Hall, please, um, so that we can assign a location to you. And we'll go through the process. But there's also a safe protocol set up for that initiative. But we've got a lot of people out there cleaning up our, yeah. our parks, our trails and our preserves, and it's it's really nice to see people out there utilizing our open space, and it's been really a, a healthy initiative for people, and I'm glad that we are providing that opportunity for people uh, to be out there and, and have that opportunity and be in, a, in an environment that doesn't put them at risk, because there's a lot of open space out there. So, thank you. Very good. Yeah, I mean, we've, we've been, received so many uh, contacts from residents wanting to be involved, wanting to help, wanting to work on behalf of uh, their neighborhood, the town, uh, their fellow Clifton Park residents. And uh, so we've, um, uh, you know, we usually have a cleanup day in April where we get three to four hundred volunteers that congregate in one day. They're working in separate areas, but it is a one day event. Um, with all with the current situation that we're experiencing, uh, people still want to be out there and help and clean up. So, clean up our town and um, uh, the parks and trails. So, allowing the you know having a uh, semi-structured I guess event that uh, uh, people can go when they get the chance. They can practice all the uh, correct social distancing and still. Uh, contribute in a major way to the general well-being of the town and that's uh, I know very important to a lot of folks so uh, so yeah that program is still running uh, I do want to mention uh, the current workforce reductions that uh, have been in place the, the original date that they were to end was April 1st uh, that has been extended through April 15th and uh, very likely will be extended further. Uh, so, like I said, we do have every department operating um, at a very low, I mean, a lot of departments, there's only one person in the department. But um, we do have people coming in uh, and uh, also some working from home when, when they can. Uh, but this virus will end. And when the virus is behind us in the rear view and public places start to open up again, and of course we have no, one, no idea when that will be, but if it occurs prior to the summer, during the summer, people are, will want to send their kids to camp and, and attend the pools and all, all the public events and amenities that we all enjoy. Thousands and thousands of Clifton Park residents enjoy each year. So we need to continue to prepare uh, to have those programs and amenities ready. And uh, that's what we're doing. Uh, um, you know, Teresa Robson, our town clerk, I mean, she's still issuing many different types of permits, certificates, um, on a regular basis. So, I mean, every, I could go through every department, but every department has a great deal of work to do. Our senior center's been closed for weeks, but we still have employees working there, and it's busy between uh, reaching out to seniors to make sure they're okay and to see how they're doing. They're receiving many, many calls during the questions that seniors have about different things that are occurring in town and otherwise. So everybody's very busy 
uh, our highway department, our buildings and grounds departments, those are our two largest departments. They're working at half strength, uh, and, and but still out there um, getting important tasks done each day. Um, we will continue with our infrastructure projects. Um, and uh, one such project uh, is the roof of Town Hall, which uh, uh, we have uh, engineers looking at that now, and that's going to be a project that, uh, one project in particular, that will probably need to get done sooner than later. Um, you know, as we go forward as a town, and this is also a discussion we've tried to get started at the county too, there's going to be a significant loss in revenue across the board. Um, every government's revenue sources will be reduced significantly. So we need to be able to properly uh, react to that reality. Um, so one way you do that is by good preparation. Have we prepared? Oh yeah, yeah. We've we have aggressively saved money and reduced debt over the years. Um, so that puts us in a very enviable position moving forward. We've been criticized. <laughs> We've been criticized quite a bit for saving too much money, for our fiscal management being overly conservative, which I never quite understood, even in good times. And I certainly... <laughs> it's certainly a good idea that we did take that stance because now when we're in situations like this, Clifton Park will remain strong through this uh, very difficult time. And again, it, it, it all depends on how long it goes on. And none of us have the ability to see into the future. But the, every day that goes on, every day that this current situation continues, is another negative day for the fiscal status of just about every business and certainly every government. And that's a reality that we're facing, but we're ready, we're prepared. Uh, several years ago when banks, when the interest rates were basically zero, we <coughs> borrowed money, not because we necessarily needed to at that time, but we wanted to complete some additional infrastructure projects, and since the money was just about free, uh, it made sense to do that. I think we're going to be in another situation like that um, soon. And that's something that uh, I have Mark watching for the last two weeks, um, when would be the right place to enter. Um, you, know, you see the 10-year ten 10-year ten bond way under 1%. Um, oil prices, and I think 26 bucks a barrel, uh, last I heard today. So, uh, you know, some of these uh, opportunities are there if we uh, plan correctly. It, if you're prepared and you can plan correctly and execute the plan, you can make a very bad situation a little less bad. I mean, that's, that's about the only way to really phrase it. Uh, and right now, that's what we need to do. We need to take a bad situation and mitigate it at every turn. Uh, we're prepared to do that. Uh, we're going to plan. We'll have a plan moving forward and we'll properly execute that plan. So right now, we're all about mitigating what we know will be uh, a very negative situation on the revenue side uh, uh, for, for uh, every government. Um, uh, another another uh, senior program that continues is the lunch program. Uh, obviously, the senior center has been closed for a number of weeks, so there's no uh, nobody can come in and have the lunch as they might do on a daily basis. But we're still delivering, and it is a way to keep people home. So we're we're making sure people know about this. Uh, if they can have lunches and dinners delivered, which they will do periodically. Uh, to get somebody through the week, um, uh, you know, that this is another option to allow people to stay home 
but do it in a safe and secure manner. So that's another another thing that we're mentioning to seniors on a regular basis. Uh, we opened the golf course this weekend, and the golf course, like our parks, are incredibly important to people, probably more than ever, uh, considering the, uh, the fact that uh, many people are home, the weather has been decent as we get into spring here, and people need an outlet for their physical and mental health. So maintaining our parks, making sure they're safe is uh, the job number one for the Buildings and Grounds Department uh, at their re reduced workforce levels. The, uh, the golf course is another option that we can offer people as a diversion and a, an opportunity to get outside and recreate. Um, we, we did take a lot of precautions to basically eliminate the need for interaction between golfers and the uh, and the attendant that we have on duty at all times. Uh, people can pay online or by check. They put the online receipt or check in a box at the attendant's uh, booth, and uh, the, there's no cash exchanging hands. We're not selling tees and other things that we usually do balls, golf balls. Out of the attendance uh, 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 booth there, like we normally do, so we're not we're not uh, making any transactions. Uh, so there's there's really uh, so we've cut down on any any of the need for that interaction between golfers and, and the attendant. Uh, we've also established a system online, so when you pay online and register, you select a tee time, and that's to put some distance between people arriving at the uh, at the golf course. We've eliminated the pins. Uh, the The cups are raised up above ground level, so the ball there's no hole for the ball to go into. So as as your ball hits the cup and bounces off, you're done. Uh, you're, you, you're done for the hole. So that way you're, you're eliminating touching pins, reaching into the hole, uh, those types of things. So uh, it's just another way to eliminate um, any object that a golfer would touch as they're playing. The other thing, we usually have pull carts. We eliminated those as well. You can bring your own. But we, uh, we will not offer full cards to, to golfers. So we appreciate everybody's patience as we uh, work, uh, work through uh, the, the situation we're experiencing. Um, we're working longer hours than normal. 65-hour um, weeks have become longer. Uh, and uh, we have volunteers working seven days a week to uh, assist people through our programs. So I just want to thank uh, everybody's effort for uh, standing up. You know, we had, uh, the, the golf course will be open 10 to 6. You know, this weekend, for instance, uh, Lori Hughes, who works in our parks department, um, she took two shifts of four hours. She worked there eight hours, uh, no extra pay, didn't even ask, wasn't even discussed. She volunteered. Uh, so we have, uh, we have people I know that have, uh, I think, uh, Teresa, and uh, her office came in, and when we had that 6,000 pounds of food, they came in and sorted it all and yeah, made it a little easier for captain when they come to pick it up. Uh, so we have uh, town employees that are coming in on their own time to do things and support our efforts. They're helping with deliveries and, and many other things. So I just want to thank them so much. And, you know, because we have older folks, uh, seasonal employees that work as attendants at the golf course, they didn't feel comfortable coming in. We said that's fine, you know, make it a mutual decision. But you know, I was glad they didn't want to come in because it just didn't make sense for them to come in. And I told them, don't worry, your job is still here. When, you, when we're ready to have you back, you know, your job is still here. And I, I know they worry about losing their job, but that won't happen. So I took the other eight hours, and Lori had eight hours, and and we got through the weekend. This week, we have town employees coming in. 
to uh, to fill the slots uh, from the buildings and grounds department. And um, uh, I'd have to look at my list again and put together a list quickly. But all the departments are helping out with four-hour shifts, and can't thank them enough. So thank you everybody very much for pulling together when we need you the most. And that's really what we should be doing as government. You know, we're in the people business, we're in the service business. This is the business we've chosen, and it's now, the, the, these are the types of situations where um, government uh, should be exemplary in its uh, method of service and uh, an ability to adapt to changing conditions, <coughs> maintain operations, but also increase services to our residents. And that's exactly what we've done here in Clifton Park. Um, any other uh, updates or discussion points? Okay, I should have mentioned uh, we do have um, Councilman Whalen who's uh, on the speakerphone. So if you hear a voice that uh, sounds like they're on the speakerphone, he is there. So uh, when we vote, I just wanted so if anybody's watching, and that's why you might hear a little difference in the sound. But we are all here. The town board is. Um, is uh, here through the uh, new regulations from uh, 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 and guidance from New York State. Uh, this type of you know you can use different types of uh, uh, methods to hold public meetings, and uh, so what we're doing here is uh, more than fits into the guidelines that were established. So I'll ask Teresa to read through the. Um, Resolutions, please, and then we'll consider each one individually. Okay. A resolution recognizing Arbor Day 2020, whereas in 1872, J. Sterling Morton proposed to the Nebraska Board of Art Agriculture that a special day be set aside for the planting of trees, and whereas this holiday, called Arbor Day, was first observed with the planting of more than a million trees in Nebraska, and whereas Arbor Day is now observed throughout the nation and the world, and whereas trees can reduce the erosion of our precious topsoil by wind and water, cutting uh, heating and cooling costs, moderate the temperature, clean the air, produce life-giving oxygen, and pro provide habitat for wildlife. And whereas trees are a renewable resource, giving us paper, wood for our homes, fuel for our fires, and countless other wood products. And whereas trees in our town, in our town increase property values, enhance the economic vitality of businesses' areas, and beautifying our community. And whereas trees, wherever they are planted, are a source of joy and spiritual renewal. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the town board urges all citizens to celebrate Arbor Day and to support efforts to protect our trees and woodlands and be it further resolved that the town board urges all citizens to plant trees to gladden the heart and promote the well-being of this and future generations. A resolution adopting a local law adjusting permit fees for the town transfer station, whereas section 97.3a of the town code contains the fee schedule for residents wishing to use the transfer station by permit, and whereas on March 16, 2020, the town board held a public hearing on a proposal to adjust the permit fee slightly for the 2020 annual season and whereas the transfer station provides efficient and effective service for a drop-off household garbage bulk waste items as well as and as in a wide variety of recyclables now therefore be it resolved that the town board adopts local law number two of 2020 attached adjusting the annual permit fees for the primary permits as attached and be it further resolved that the bulk item fee Schedule is amended as attached and that the transfer station and town court are authorized to publish the attached schedule for bulk items. A resolution authorizing the purchase of an ADA compliant shuttle bus for the Senior Express Shuttle Service. Whereas Town Supervisor Philip Barrett has requested authorization for the purchase of a new shuttle bus for the Senior Van Service per the attached and whereas General Municipal Law Section 10316 authorizes the extension of equipment configurations and awarded pricing discounts to all political subdivisions in New York State based upon qualified bid responses to an individual municipality entity after public notice and bidding and whereas a request for bids was published and bids were opened on March 13, 2020 and whereas Mr. Supervisor Barrett has recommended that the 2021 Elkhart Coach EC2 with standard equipment and options 
as per the attached bid submission from Matthew Bus Alliance Incorporated from Orlando, Florida, be accepted to best meet the needs of the senior express for a price not to exceed $59,963. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the supervisor is authorized to purchase the 2021 Elkhart Coach EC2 with standard equipment and options from the Matthew Bus Alliance Incorporated, 4802 West Colonial Drive, Orlando, Florida, per the attached list, and be it further resolved that the Clifford Park Town Board hereby authorizes the purchase in an amount not to exceed $59,000. $963 to be paid with a transfer from unassigned fund balance, uh, general fund senior support equipment. A resolution awarding the bid for pool chemicals for the Barney Road, Locust Lane, and Burning Bush pools for the 2020 season, whereas on April 3rd, 2020 bids were received for the above reference contract, and whereas the supervisor has recommended that the bid for pool chemicals for the three town pools be award awarded to Surpass Chemical uh, Company Incorporated for the following amounts. Sodium hypochloride, uh, $1.24 per gallon. Cardboard bleach, uh, $7 for a five gallon container. Muratic acid, $3.35 a gallon. Drum deposit, $8 per carboy. Sodium bisulfate. Uh, 57 cents per pound. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the town of Clifton Park hereby accepts and awards the above reference bid to surpass chemical 1254 Alt Broadway, Albany, New York, to be paid as follows from line Barney Road um, Pool Supplies, Locust Lane Pool Supplies, and Country Knowles Pool Supplies in accordance with the amount used at each pool. A resolution hiring seasonal lifeguards and head lifeguards for the 2020 summer season for Barney Road, Country Knowles, and local slain pools, whereas the town board wishes to hire lifeguards and head lifeguards to maintain a safe environment at the pool, town pools, as well as assist in the management of those pools at Barney Road, Country Knolls, and local slain pools, and whereas the supervisor has recommended that the attached list of individuals be hired on the stated start dates as lifeguards and head lifeguards at the attached rates. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the individuals attached shall be hired as lifeguards and head lifeguards for the Boney, Barney Road, Locust Lane, and Country Knowles pool for the 2020 season to be paid at the rates as attached. A resolution scheduling a public hearing regarding extension number one to Dutch Meadows Sewer District number one, whereas the town board proposes to create extension number one, the extension to the Dutch Meadows Sewer Department, Sewer District number one, and whereas a map and a report, the maps and plans have been prepared by Lansing Engineering and dated April 1st, 2020 in a manner and detail as determined by the Town Board regarding the proposed extension and where as the map and plans have been filed in the Town Clerk's Office and are available for public inspection during regular business hours and whereas the properties within the proposed extension are as listed in Exhibit A to this resolution and are generally known as 92, 94, 96, 98, and 102 Hubs Road and whereas the sewer systems system improvements proposed to be constructed in and for the extension the improvements consist of the construction and acquisition of new gravity sewer lines and related sewer infrastructures and furnishings machinery equipment and apparatus required in connection with therewith and whereas the estimated maximum amount to be expended for the improvements including design construction and administrative costs is estimated to be twenty eight thousand two hundred dollars and will be borne by the project owner developer without capital costs or bonded indebtedness uh, to the new extension and whereas the proposed method of financing the cost of the improvements consists of private construction of the improvements by the developer with some subsequent dedication to the town as commissioners of the Dutch Meadows Sewer District number one and whereas the annual cost of the proposed extension to the typical property in the extension is estimated to be $556 per year consisting of ad valorem assessments and $247 in sewer charges payable to the county, uh, Saratoga County Sewer District no Number 1 and $160 for the Dutch Meadows Sewer District Number 1. And whereas the estimated cost of the hookup fees to the typical property as part of the extension is anticipated to be $1,000 and whereas each homeowner within the district will also be required to purchase and install grinder pumps to, pumps to make the system compatible with Dutch Meadows gravity gravity based sewer mains, resulting in an anticipated year one capital cost of up to ten thousand dollars. Now therefore be it resolved that the town board will hold a public hearing 
to hear all persons interested in the extension and the proposed sewer system improvements with which public hearings shall be held in the Wood Memorial Room on Town Hall Plaza in the Town of Clifton Park on April 20, 2020 at 7.05 p.m. and be it further resolved and ordered that the town clerk give notice of such hearing by publishing in the official town newspaper a copy of this resolution and by posting a copy of this resolution on the town's official sign board not less than 10 or more than 20 days before such hearing. Uh, well, one thing there, um, if we are to continue with 5 o'clock mm. meetings, it would have to be 5.05. Okay. If that is uh, agreeable to everybody. Absolutely. A resolution extending a print alliance one point agreement for fulfillment of printer toner printer toner cartridges by National Business Technologies, whereas by resolution number 49 of 2019, the town entered into a 12 month agreement with National Business Technologies, 505 Bradford Street, Albany. New York for a comprehensive purchasing of the town's printer toner cartridges at the lowest cost and including additional services of repair and maintenance to applicable <coughs> printers and whereas the agreement provided for extension upon mutual consent in writing and and therefore uh, whereas the supervisor's office has recommended that the agreement be extended for 36 months now therefore be it resolved that the Clifton Park Town Board hereby authorizes the contract to national business technologies at an estimated co annual cost of $5,730 per year for a 36-month commitment to be charged from town hall office supplies and be it further resolved that the agreement may be extended upon mutual consent in writing. A resolution authorizing the hiring of campsite directors for the full day camp and four half day camps and the preschool camp for the 2020 season, whereas the town board wishes that staff be hired by the Department of Parks and Recreation to operate the Town of Clifton Park 2020 Summer Recreation Programs, and whereas Myla Kramer, Director of Parks, Recreation, and Community Affairs, has recommended that the individuals listed in Schedule A attached here to be hired for such purpose. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the campsite directors listed in Schedule A attached here to shall be hired to staff the Town of Clifton Park Summer Recreation Programs, and be it further resolved that all hires are effective with start dates and ending dates as per Schedule A. A resolution hiring camp counselors and specialists for the 2020 day, full day and four half day camp, summer day camp program, whereas the town board wishes to hire returning staff members for operation of the town's summer day camp program, and whereas Myla Kramer, Director of Parks, Recreation, and Community Affairs, has recommended that the individuals listed in the attached schedules a and B be hired. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the individuals listed in the attached schedules A and B be hired as staff for the town's 2020 day camp program, effective dates as noted on the schedules, and be it further resolved that the staff be paid as indicated on schedules A and B. A resolution awarding the contracts for fireworks for the town of Clifton Park's 4th of July celebration to Santora's world famous fireworks and authorizing the supervisor to sign the agreement for same. Whereas bids were solicited for the annual 4th of July fireworks display and opened on March 19, 2020, and whereas Santoro's world famous fireworks, 846 Stillwater Bridge Rose, Scattercoke, New York, has submitted the sole bid in the amount of $17,250 for a 20 minute musically choreographed pyrotechnic display, and whereas Myla Kramer, Director of Parks and Recreation and Community Affairs, has recommended that the bid of Santoro's World famous fireworks in the amount of $17,250 be accepted. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the bid for the 4th of July fireworks display be awarded to Santoro's world famous fireworks, Scattercoke, New York, at a cost not to exceed $17,250 as budgeted from festivals performing arts, 4th of July festival, and therefore be it further resolved that the supervisor is hereby authorized to sign an agreement reflecting the above terms, subject to review and approval by the town attorney of the agreement. Resolution number 73 of 2020, a resolution recognizing the Arbor Day 2020. So moved. Second. Uh, moved by Mrs. Standard, second by Ms. Wallowit. Um, Mr. Whalen, did you want to uh, say something about the resolution? 
Sure, so this resolution is to reflect on our Parks and Recreation Department of Town uh, annually has uh, celebrated Alice Arbor Day, but I believe this is the first time we've adopted uh, a resolution uh, recognizing Arbor Day, so uh, the town is certainly happy to be recognized uh, an important day uh, in Arbor Day. Certainly, you know, you may mention earlier regarding the town's wonderful outdoor uh, facilities and parks and recreation and whatnot, so I think recognizing Arbor Day is uh, certainly important. Yeah, I would agree. Um, yeah, that's another important point I wanted to make. You know, as you drive by certain parks, and I don't think I've ever seen our parks used as much as they are over the last couple of weeks at any one time anyway. So you have many more people at a park at one time than normal. So when you drive by a parking lot and you see a lot of people in the parking lot, um, just just uh, as you would in a grocery store or anywhere else that you're going where there might be people around, just be very cautious and careful when you're in the parking lot and when you're in the park. But once you get into the park, uh, there's plenty of space. Uh, you know, I started to think this weekend of uh, the number of acres we have in a lot of our parks. You know, the Bishop Ferry Preserves, 300 and change, uh, Dwaskill Nature Preserve, 250, Garnsey, 150, and with another 90 off Waite Road now. Um, the uh, Veterans Park, we've added over 100 acres to that park, so we're looking at a couple hundred there.